Today's Saturday, July 4th, and this is News from the Frunk. Hey everyone, another episode of News from the Frunk. I know a lot of you thought you'd never see another one, but here we are, finally, and I thought we'd have a little bit of change of scenery and get out of the garage uh, and come and visit West Palm Beach. So this, in the background, is the West Palm Beach Service Centre. This is the West Palm Beach Supercharger, and I'm giving Sparky here a quick top off and we'll record a few episodes of News from the Frunk. So welcome back to News from the Frunk, or today, News from the Trunk. Um, we've got a lot to talk about. Sorry it has been so long since we've recorded an episode. Um, we've had the Q1 results, we've had all kinds of announcements, all kinds of stories. We've just had the Q2 figures released, so there's a lot to catch up on. Um, we're probably going to do three or four episodes. Uh, so we're going to start out with the Q1 shareholder conference and the results that got talked about there. All right, so let's go all the way back to May the 6th and the Q1 shareholder call. Seems like a distant memory now, and we're going to be getting the Q2 shareholder call pretty quickly. But let's run through the Q1 results and see what came out. Um, record revenues up 52% year on year. The non-GAAP revenues were over a billion dollars, $1.1 billion. Uh, operating loss, $154 million, uh, only $45 million on non-GAAP. Um, some concern by the analysts about the amount of expenditure and how quickly Tesla was burning through cash. They talked about $426 million of capital expenditure, a lot of that going on the Gigafactory, obviously, which we'll talk about later, and revamping the production line in the Fremont factory ready for uh, Model X, um, but they've still got $1.51 billion in cash and cash equivalents. Now, since then, Tesla has actually opened up a credit line um, between $500 million and $750 million. So um, they are clearly burning through a lot of cash and a lot more to spend. I think Elon was quoted as saying they're going to be spending obscene amounts of money on that Gigafactory especially. Um, but the, uh, the numbers are all heading in the right direction, at least for those of us that are long on Tesla. There are always going to be the naysayers. There is always going to be people who are sh holding short positions. But at least from my perspective, things look pretty good. What else did they talk about in the shareholder call? Uh, well, let's talk about Tesla, the car company, for a little while. Um, they're talking about a 20 to 30 percent increase in headcount this year uh, versus the 100 percent growth they had in headcount last year. Um, but they're also looking at 100% production, 100% uh, increase in the car production. So the overall productivity for em per employee is going up very significantly. Uh, in Q1, they produced just over 1,100 cars, which was up 48%, uh, and delivered 10,000 cars. Now that was up 56%. Now, they've just announced the Q2 deliveries. We don't know the production numbers or revenue or anything else, but they've just announced Q2. Uh, and Q2 was uh, just about 11,500. So that's up from 10,000 in Q1 and up 52% year on year. Uh, so still growing at, at quite staggering rates. In Q1, they averaged more than 1,000 cars a week. Um, and uh, there was some speculation at the time about uh, what the demand for the 70D was going to be. That had just been introduced uh, and they, Elon, at the thought, uh, Elon at the time thought it was going to be maybe 50-50 with the 85 kilowatt hour cars. Um, but at the shareholder meeting they gave some new figures and they said a third of all the cars ordered were 70Ds. What else? Well, Model 3 was talked about briefly. Uh, it will be shown sometime around March of 2016, which is coming up very quickly, less than a year away now. Uh, they have engineering prototypes uh, and obviously a lot of work going on in the design studio. And they are looking at late 2017 for production. It was also confirmed by something that uh, JB said that there are going to be multiple variants of the Model 3. There is going to be a, a mini SUV version as well. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a surprise. There may well be some other variants. Um, I think Tesla uh, are trying to figure out, if they haven't already, how they position themselves in that segment. Uh, Chevy have announced the Bolt uh, with a B, not the Volt with a V, uh, the Chevy Bolt is going to be available and is going to be a competitor to that Model 3. 
So it's going to be an interesting battle to see how those two cars uh, compare with each other in a couple of years' time. What else? Well, Model X, several hundred Model X cars had already been built back in May. Uh, lots of testing going on. Um, uh, and Elon is driving those cars every week. Uh, and he's obviously, as you would expect, very, very positive about them. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to see one pretty soon. He did also say that the Model X configurator will be coming in July. Well, I'm recording this July 4th, uh, Independence Day. Um, so hopefully within the next couple of three weeks, we will see that and begin to see what the final finished product looks like. And sticking with the Model X, he did confirm that there will be a performance version comparable to the P85D. Now, we expect Model X to be heavier, so it won't necessarily get those same performance figures, but there will be a performance version. Okay, now for Tesla Energy. Quite a lot of the shareholder discussion was, was spent talking about Tesla Energy. Um, there was a report that Solar City wasn't interested in the Powerwall product that Tesla announced. Um, and Elon explained what was going on there. Um, the, really, the, the power wall, the smaller version, the daily cycling version of that, is really targeted at the European market. I'm not going to get into it in here. There's plenty of things you can look at on, on the net um, that explain the differences between the daily cycling version and the battery backup version. But the economics of the US electricity market versus the European electricity market basically mean that the daily cycling version is really much more suited uh, to the European market. However, um, it is for sale on uh, the American market and it will be offered to everybody who wants to buy it, and this, but will be prioritized for those customers that are already on solar uh, and are looking for that daily cycling capability. Now, they did confirm that they expect 80 to 90% of the demand to be for the power pack. That's the utility version rather than the residential version. Um, and starting in Q1 2016, all Tesla battery products, that's the pack for the cars and the uh, power wall and power pack will ship from the Gigafactory. So they're going to be turning off the production that's currently going, going on in Fremont. Uh, and move across to the Gigafactory in Nevada. And one other tidbit about the Gigafactory, because of the demand that they've seen uh, in both the residential and utility versions of the Powerwall and the Powerpack, they are looking to see how they can increase the capacity of the Gigafactory even before they finish building the first part of it. Uh, it is currently sized for 50 gigawatt hours per year, uh, and they are looking to increase that up to 50% more uh, quite how they're going to do that, whether that's just going to be a physical expansion of the factory or by re-engineering some of the internal processes, they didn't say. Now, I said that they are moving battery production from Fremont into the Nevada Gigafactory. Uh, they are also uh, moving uh, or have moved casting and uh, machining out of Fremont into the Lathrop facility in Central California. That frees up more space at the factory for vehicle assembly. Um, the other thing that's happened at the factory is they have this new paint center. Uh, Elon believes it is possibly the most advanced uh, paint center in the world and has been sized for 10,000 cars a week. Now that means it will cope with the full production capacity of the Fremont factory when Model 3 is in full production. A couple of other bits of information that came out of that shareholder call. One was that the CFO is retiring. Now, again, the, all the short sellers uh, started speculating that, oh my God, Tesla is in dire straits, the CFO is leaving, blah, blah, blah. Um, since then, things have calmed down. The share price has actually grown very significantly since that original set of Q1 results and then the shareholder call. So, so generally, overall, the market doesn't seem to think that's a problem at all. Finally, one little thing about the Model 3. Elon confirmed that the base Model 3 will be a two-wheel drive, uh, whereas the base Model S is a four-wheel drive car. Uh, so the base Model 3 is two-wheel drive, but there will be an all-wheel drive version of it. And then, last but not least, uh, they announced that the billionth Tesla mile had been driven. Uh, and then less than two weeks later, they announced that the billionth Model S mile had been driven. So that's it. A quick wrap up of the Q1 and shareholder uh, call and meeting. Back in the next episode with more general news.